Hey everybody, welcome to the Murder Journal. I'm Mel. And if you've been following the Karen Reed trial, you're probably like me. There's a lot of witnesses the prosecution has brought forward that have same last names or how do they know each other or they're connected somehow and it can be confusing. So what I decided to do is just take today to just very simply break down the relationships and how all these people are connected because it's pretty important. This is what the defense is arguing that there's been some cahoots between all of these witnesses and Karen Reed's been framed. So without further ado, you know what? Let's just get started. Okay, so we're going to break this down Barney style as best we can. I mean, I'm even getting confused sometimes if you're wondering why. I mean, these are allegedly how all of these people who are involved in this case or who are witnesses somehow are related. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I don't get it. It's kind of small. You're not alone. Some of these slides, I actually did have to look up some of these people and the relationships because I'm like, Turtle Boy, who the hell is Turtle Boy? Apparently he's a journalist and I have, I have purposely not been watching his streams on this case. He's in the third column, one, two, three, four down. That's Aiden Turtle Boy Kearney. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. If you have no problems with knowing some backstories and things like that, um, go. I highly recommend you go to his YouTube channel, Turtle Boy Live, because, I mean, he's been following this from the get-go. However, let's just look at the main key witnesses that the prosecution has brought forth so far. Okay, so up here at the top right, you have John O'Keefe. John O'Keefe is the decedent, the victim in this case. The incident and his body was found at Brian and Nicole Albert, who's dead center of this. It's, it, it occurred at their house. Now, to the right of Nicole Albert is the prosecution's star witness, Jennifer McCabe. Jennifer McCabe and Nicole Albert are sisters. Yes, people, the key witness is the sister to Nicole Albert and the sister-in-law of Brian Albert. Her husband is Matthew McCabe, who's to the right of her. If you watched his testimony at all, he's not, he doesn't come across as a very likable person because in the murder trial of someone who was allegedly a really close friend of his wife, he was smirking, he was smiling, and he was laughing on the stand. Not did not come across very well. To right next to Brian Albert, if you're looking at the screen, it's on his left, is Chris Albert. Now, Chris Albert is Brian Albert's brother. Chris Albert also sits on the executive government of their small town of Canton. And Julie Albert is Chris Albert's wife. Julie Albert's best friend is Courtney Proctor, who we haven't seen yet. We haven't heard from. So she's kind of blacked out. We haven't seen Michael Proctor yet, but I had to include his face here because Michael Proctor is married to Courtney Proctor, who is best friends with Julie Albert, the sister-in-law of Brian Albert and Nicole Albert. Now, un, in the third line, you have Colin Albert. Colin Albert is the son of Julie and Chris Albert and the nephew of Brian and Nicole Albert. And Allison McCabe, to the far right, is the daughter of Jennifer McCabe and Matthew McCabe. So that makes Allison McCabe and Colin Albert cousins. At the same time, per testimony, Allison and Colin both admitted they're best friends as well. Now, Brian Albert Jr., it was his birthday, which is why everybody was meeting at Brian Albert Sr.'s house um, to celebrate Brian Albert Jr.'s birthday. Brian Albert Jr. and Caitlin Albert are brother and sister, and they are 
the children of Brian Albert Sr. and Nicole Albert, making them also cousins to Allison McCabe and Colin Albert. So as you can see, and from what I understand from their testimony, the Alberts and the McCabes are extremely close and tight knit, which is not uncommon for families. In the house that night were Caitlin Albert, Brian and Nicole Albert, who are the, the homeowners, their daughter, Caitlin Albert, their son, Brian Albert Jr. You had Nicole's sister, Jennifer McCabe, and her husband, Matt McCabe. You had a gentleman named Brian Higgins, a woman named Julie Nagel, and another woman named Sarah Levinson. And then at the bottom of this house is Colin Albert and John O'Keefe. And the reason why they're in question marks is because Colin Albert claims he wasn't there when John and that John O'Keefe wasn't there and that Colin Albert wasn't there when all these people were there. Was he in the house or not? That was the question. Now, John O'Keefe is in question marks because all of these people in the house, including Colin Albert, say that John O'Keefe never came inside. At the top left is Karen Reed. Now, she is the defendant in this case. They are claiming that she backed her Lexus SUV into John O'Keefe and it killed him while he was standing outside. The defense, you'll hear it a lot, is David Yanetti. He's the one on the left. And Alan Jackson, who is on the right. And the prosecution for the Commonwealth is Adam Lawley. Uh, Lawley... I don't know. We got questions, Lolly. We got questions. This isn't going so well. And I'm questioning the spiky hairdo in the front, but that's neither here nor there. So now you understand the relationships between the Alberts, the McCabe's, and John O'Keefe. Now you're probably wondering how do they know each other? John O'Keefe and Jen McCabe they were very close. Keep in mind, John O'Keefe was neighbors with all these people. They're all, they all live in the same area pretty much, um, but he did live very close. So there you have it, folks. That is the simplest breakdown. I would like to give credit to a lot of these graphs from uh, Court TV, uh, Law and Crime, uh, and also the best one of all, Google Images. You know, that, that was the best way I could get this. That was simple. I was starting to make one myself, but then I thought, you know, why reinvent the wheel? I mean, this case is confusing enough. So that's it for now. And we're going to be doing more clips with more breakdowns. Tommy and I are going to look at Colin Albert's testimony. And we're also going to look at some of the evidence that has been shown to the jury because, well, in the immortal words of Emily D. Baker, I got questions. All right. See you next time.